Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Freedom Link, this seventh day of September, 2015, Labor Day here in the United States. I'm Joe Joseph, along with Johnny King and Melissa Dykes, True Stream Media, TrueStreamMedia.com, and the one and only Kev Baker. You know, I was having so much fun on KBS, I just couldn't resist your flirtations to join this woo crew that you have assembled well, thank show. you and and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a parte it wouldn't be a parte without aaron dykes here too come on aaron woohoo hello everybody hey buddy man i'll going? tell you what wait a minute did you just say that you were flirting with kevin before that did i miss he does that it part? all the, all the time. time mel it's shameless hey, bromance <laughs> <laughs> that's right wow you need a soundboard for the bromance song yeah <laughs> he really doesn't he really doesn't need another soundboard no no definitely not definitely not. but boy do we have a great broadcast in store for you tonight because we're going to be going through a couple of things uh the first thing we're going to go through tonight is the burning man ceremony that just went on uh and then we're going to get into the september list that mel has put together and uh, what a list it is. Holy smokes. This month is really shaping up to be very unique, especially if you look back at world history. Um, it ends up, you don't find too many months like this, you know? So we'll be getting into that. Or any in our lifetime like Perhaps, this, yeah. actually. <laughs> and others, too. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. But I want to start off with the Burning Man. So Johnny uh, got me researching some of this Burning Man stuff. And John, I mean, it's a ritual, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely, start to finish. All those people taking place, taking part in a ancient pagan ritual, and not even realizing it. Yeah, and and really, that's kind of the best way to do that. They had seventy thousand people out there at the uh, Burning Man parte ritual thing over the last week. I mean, if that's your thing, whatever. But you should do your homework before you go and participate in uh, things like this. It, and for some reason, Johnny, this this um, this whole ceremony, this ritual, reminded me very much of uh, the Nicolas Cage movie, Wicker Man. Now, if you haven't seen that movie, that is a really messed up movie. I mean, you got to watch that because uh, basically it's this uh, this coven of witches that would seduce men. And bring them back, uh, uh, drug them, and then throw them in the um, in the wicker man, and then burn them to death. You and had me all the way up to drug them. Well, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then after that, I guess burning to death was okay. No. I mean, why not? You're already there, right? Might as well. Yes, I'm burnt out, but no. yes, uh, but I mean these these human sacrifices. Or these rituals have gone on for a very long time. Now, I'm not saying that anybody got ritually sacrificed at the Burning Man. However, you have to understand the spiritual significance of participating in this, whether you think it's a party or not. You're an active participant in this. And, Johnny, I mean, what is the whole Burning Man ceremony all about? Uh, the goddess, the, the mother. But, I mean, specifically, what are you trying to do? Channel that power? Oh, yes, channel the power for a specific person or purpose. And what that specific purpose is depends on uh, the theme for the year. Like uh, they, they have several different Burning Man uh, parties throughout the year in, in regions across the world, like uh, Burning Portal, things of that. Yeah, nature. yeah, they have the Burning Portal coming up in, in New York. I mean, what? If you look the at the what? Oh yeah. Oh boy. Yes. This is this is very, 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 very deep. Yes. So there's not just one like event. There's regional events as well that happen um, as part of this whole Burning Man process, I guess, or organization. And it really so, is. An, it, it is an organization. You know. Go ahead, Johnny. At the bottom of the BurningMan.org website. They list the upcoming global events, right, for the Burning Man. Well, and, and of course, some of these Johnny King uh, have already happened. Right. Like, for and example, they, let me let me give a couple to to just grease the skids here. 
You've got Kiwi Burn. That happened in January. You got Africa Burn. That happened in April. You also had Seguro Burn in, in April. Then you have Reclamation in May. Uh, Mid Burn in May. Burning Flipside in May. Uh, let's see, what's another big one? Oh, <laughs> my personal favorite, Lakes of Fire in June 2015. So one of their ceremonies, Mel, was Lakes of Fire. That sounds fun. Oh, yeah. I, when, I'm, when I'm bored and I don't have anything else to do, I'm always like, you know, I wonder if they're having a Lakes of Fire event. I could go part of it. They're really... Gee. Yeah, but 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 okay. So in July, but wait, there's more. But wait, but there's, wait more. there's more. In Your July, lakes of fire comes with a free. In July, they also had a, a, a an event called Portal Burn. Yeah, up in New York, Portal Burn. Oh, really? Yes. Just saying, and then of course in October they have U Y O U Topia. Ah, <laughs> I just I just can't wait to go. Or. If you want to wait till November when it's a little cooler out, they have preheat. Oh, that's great. Yes, let's, let's just be part of that. Mm. I mean, so, it looks- so do people just wander into this in a zombie like state and think that there's no symbolism or meaning to any of these things and it's all just random? Can, and then- uh, let me let me throw <laughs> I got to throw this out. Aaron, Aaron, I mean, would you say that people in general are a bit shallow? What do you think? I don't want to say that. Well, because it, if if you said it, I would truly at this point believe it. <laughs> but because you didn't, I have hope. I do. Four followers. There's not. I guess I would say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. Isn't there a side of Burning Man that's just a bunch of hippies in the desert? Also, totally. No, 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 no. Most of them. Most of them, that's all it is to them. But our point is, do they, and and this is the problem. They have no idea what they're participating in. To them, it's just a hippie event. But the people that's running it, the people that organize it, it's much more than a bunch of hippies getting together and, and you know. and, and it's, it's like watching... Together. It's like watching the halftime show with Beyonce the year that she totally looked demon possessed and her throat, all of the, the muscle in the throat stuck out and there were veins and her eyes went yes. black and her tongue got all thick and weird. And she said, raise your hands up. And she looked like a man by that point, like all the muscles in her body were it, that was really pretty, probably one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. And she's telling all of the people to raise their hands up to her so she can feel their energy. Remember that? Uh, totally. But- and I'm sure those people thought, this is just a cool halftime Beyonce show at the Super Bowl. Having no right. concept of the things that were actually going on. If you have ever seen the movie Exorcist, I don't even think they got close enough to what happened to her on the stage. That was one of the most screwed up, horrifying things I've ever seen. And that includes Hillary Clinton laughing at Gaddafi's death. So. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but that's my point is that most people just say, Oh, well, you know, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of hippies getting together, tree and hugging was, and taking hallucinogens. Exactly. But wasn't this year also the Festival of Mirrors? Isn't that what they called this year's specific yes. Burning Man? There was the Festival of Mirrors. So you have that whole duality thing like we're seeing also with CERN, with the light matter and the dark matter. Is that Would that be accurate for me to say? Mm, feeling it, yes. Absolutely, it would be accurate for you to say. You know, another th- interesting thing is that they, they put this out in the 10 principles of Burning Man. Yeah, well, they actually have a like a set of, of rules that they go by or principles that they go by. And this uh, uh, Burning Man co-founder Larry Harvey wrote these 10 principles in 2004 as guidelines for the newly formed regional network. And they were crafted not as a dictate of how people should be and act, but as a reflection of the community's ethos and culture as organically developed since the event's inception. And as these 10 principles are radical inclusion, Meaning anyone may be a part of Burning Man. We welcome and respect the stranger. No prerequisite exists for participation in our community. Of course not. Come on, come all. Uh, Gifting 
This is another principle. Burning Man is devoted to acts of gift giving. The value of gift of a gift is unconditional. Uh, gifting does not contemplate a return or an exchange for something of equal value. Let's see what else. Uh, de decommodification. Okay. In order to preserve the spirit of gifting, our community seeks to create social environments that are unmedi unmeditated. Oh, I'm sorry, unmediated by uh, commercial sponsorship, transactions, or advertising. We stand ready to protect our culture from such exploitation. We resist the substitution of consumption for participatory experience. So far, so good, John? Sure, sounds good to me. Okay, radical self-reliance. Burning Man encourages the individual to discover, exercise, and rely on his or her inner resources. Mm -hmm. Radical self-expression. Radical self-expression arises from the unique gifts of the individual. No one other than the individual or a collaborating group can determine its content. It is offered as a gift to others. In this spirit, the giver should respect the rights and liberties of the recipient. And let's see, communal effort. Our community values create cooperation and collaboration. We strive to produce, promote, and protect social networks, public spaces, works of art, and methods of communication that support such interaction. That's until the FBI start using their snooping technology on these 70,000 people. And, um, you know, they were talking about, oh, cell phones going dead and not being able to work. Well, yeah, when you get that many people together in one place, you know, the FBI is bound to try to test out their new latest and greatest snooping and jamming technology, which is exactly what they did. Uh, there's also civic responsibility. We value civil society. Community members who organize events should assume responsibility for public welfare and endeavor to communicate civic responsibilities to participants. They must also assume responsibilities for conducting events in accordance with local, state, and federal laws. Also, leaving no trace. Make sure that when you go there, it looks the same as when you left or when you got before you got there, and then participation. It says, our, communicate, our, our community is committed to a radically participatory participatory ethic we believe that transformative change whether in the individual or in society can occur only through the medium of deep personal participation we achieve being uh we achieve being through doing everyone is invited to work there you go johnny king yes sir so what do you think that are you going next year Oh, absolutely not. The the way they have this worded, they, they throw key words in there, in the spirit. Uh, your inner talents. Uh, I wonder how you can get 70,000 people in one area and not do any destruction. Does that mean that they're going to be taking their... They levitate. They're dicing mm. down through the desert and spinning up all the dust. Dude, if, if you eat that much shroom, that many shrooms, I'm sure you're going to be levitating. Just say it. Yeah, but that last one that you mentioned, let's, let's read that again slowly. All right, here we go. Our <clears throat> community is committed to a radically participatory ethic. We believe that transformative change, whether in the individual or in society, can occur only through the medium of deeply personal participation. Yes, yes. We achieve being through doing. Yes. What are they doing what to they doing each to other? Yeah, and what is what is the group of them together radically participatory? I mean, the, yeah. this is some very I mean, again, heavy uh, dou double speak. Double here. speak, yes. And I, I saved the, the last one, the last. <laughs> this is the... But wait, there's more. Call them the next 10 minutes and we'll give you immediacy. Ah, now listen to this. Immediate experience is, in many ways, the most important touchstone of value in our culture. We seek to <clears throat> overcome barriers that stand between us and a recognition of our inner selves, the reality of those around us, participation in society, and contact with a natural world exceeding human powers. Exceeding human powers. It, it, it's, yeah, no idea can substitute for this experience. So they're harvesting energy off of these people. That's what it is. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it is, Mel. 
You just nailed it. Now, you know, obviously, they're conjuring they're conjuring beings or entities from somewhere else. I mean, it says it right there in, at the bottom of the uh, ten principles, in the, the immediacy. And contact with a natural world exceeding human powers. Squirrels can't exceed human powers. Deer cannot exceed human powers. However, dimensional beings from another reality, demons, angels, and other spirits, can exceed human powers. And that Burning Man is an epigy to an old, old Wiccan uh, ritual that was done hundreds and even thousands of years ago, but it's been modernized, but it's all there. You are correct, Mel. It is hidden, but it's in plain sight if you it's, know what you're looking at. You know what it is? So Kat? would the mirrors be making that more powerful? Think about this. Think about this. Kev Baker, have you ever seen a solar farm? Yes, I have, yeah, but just on Mel's point there about the mirror, yeah, that's been used in like the paranormal realms for a thing called scrying, and it's looked upon as almost a portal into the other dimension. Oh man, and that... which ties right in with CERN as well, obviously. <laughs> this is what I'm saying because I I saw some pictures of it. Actually, I saw an article where they said they thought this year's Burning Man was going to have so many people that it was going to show up. Uh, the USGS had a seismologist talking about how it was going to show up on their measurement and on their on their instruments. Yeah. Totally. That's how hardcore it was going to be. think about this for a second. Just think about this. Like I said, solar farm, right? You're taking all of that energy, say 70,000 mirrors, right? And you're focusing it on that one point. You know, you're, you're, that's what those mirrors do. They heat up that water. They superheat the water using the sun's energy, makes steam power, drives a turbine, and you've got electrical power. I thought you were going to burst into George Bush's thousand points of light. Speech. Thousand, <laughs> right. yes. Uh, thousand my, points of light. Read my lips. No new taxes. Uh, but they do have a very specific uh, pattern that they have all these people get into. Also, did you guys see that the picture of Absolutely. it? Absolutely, from- John. What is that? What is that? Because you you gave it a specific name. That shape. The shape. Yeah. Don't you remember? You were saying something about the shape. How they were. Uh, how it was laid out? Yes, the shape is laid out into the symbol of the goddess. There you go. So that's what it, that's the goddess's actual symbol. And John mentions uh, mentions shapes there. Now we can look at all of these kind of ritualistic concerts and events. We see all the symbology, and that's basically to almost invoke a reaction in our minds on a subconscious level. Because all these geometric shapes, we respond to them from back at a time before we had language. And they really are. It is an energy harvest in events. All of these things are. Exactly. And and it's kind of like a win-win, right? Because these people go there, right? They, they're they having a party. And to most of them, that's all it is. Hey, it's a sm- smashing good time for a week. You know, go out into the desert, party hardy. No problem. But y- there's yet you're paying it admission. You don't realize it, but you are. It's just, it's not monetary in nature. It's with your soul. With your soul. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. I pledged to vote for Hillary. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that was horrible. That was a good Mr. Frog impersonation. That's in the news. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, you look at that aerial view, Mel, and you, you know, you just posted it here that's exactly i mean it don't get much more occult than that i'm just saying that's an that's an amazing um so so i mean you know all of this stuff is going on right at the same time we have the september list the thing well that's the thing it it started right at the end of august august 30th and it carried on for the first week of this month exactly how convenient how convenient. So you, you lead in the month with the Burning Man uh, parte slant ceremony. Well, and uh, and then we just, now, now we're here. And now we're here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, the thing is, is, and I've been telling people this on Facebook, and people have asked us for a while, please do a September video. And I I considered it 
because there is such a great convergence of events that that is happening right yeah. now. It's, so- it's anybody who's been doing this for these many years as we all have, and you guys are even veterans long before I came on the scene, but we are all noticing obviously that there is a great convergence of events happening this month. That is not something that I could just go to next month and say, and here's all the things for October and here's for November. It wouldn't be the same as what we're seeing right now. And knowing what we know about the sick people that are in charge of everything that is why I find it hard to believe that we won't see some pretty incredible things happen this month or something. I don't know. It just seems to me, why would they pass up the chance to use that as a self-fulfilling prophecy for whatever means they're wanting to do? I mean, and I'm not, I'm not one for picking dates and saying, well, on this no. day, and I've seen that. I've seen it all over YouTube. People are completely losing their minds. They're yeah, freaking no out. For that. And I feel really bad for them because I feel like, well, Okay, I mean, there's a whole group of people right now, for example, that are just absolutely certain that an asteroid is going to hit the planet in a couple of weeks. I know. I NASA's know. covered it up. And honestly... And, and same, it, same with every armchair amateur astronomer as well. Well, yeah. it, but I feel really... it's Okay, so let's say that's the case, and there's a giant asteroid hurling its way towards Earth right now, and it's going to be here in a couple of weeks. Why are you spending your time, the last few weeks you have left, on YouTube, freaking out. When how winter, is that going to? When in how winter, is it, or in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. Scream and shout. Is that gonna? Is the freaking out on the YouTube video gonna somehow get up to where the asteroid is? Change its mind? yes. It's going to change course. I mean, there's other people who have written, a, I guess, a book or something because they're just absolutely certain that the rapture's coming. And so after September 23rd, they're not going to be here anymore because they're going to be, I guess. <sighs> beamed away in a, right, in sure, a golden sure. rush of light. The, what was the, um, there was a, uh, I can't remember if it was a church or whatever, but they sold everything they had a couple of years back and said, oh yeah, Christ is coming back on uh, May something. And they went on a bus tour. If you remember. And I think I saw, did that one have billboards? Cause I remember seeing yeah, billboards, billboards. Right. Yeah. They sold everything to tell the whole world. Hey, they're coming back. And I mean, it was like the modern day Millerite movement. Really was it was it was unbelievable. how did that work out for them? Yeah, not good, not good. I mean, I think it's it would be silly for us to sit here and say, well, I know a lot of stuffs happening in September, but as alternative media and truth activists, let's not talk about that and pretend it's not there. Now that would just be silly. We should talk about it, but freaking out about it and just completely losing our minds—that's that's not serving a purpose either. I think it's better for us to sit here and work through some of what's going on to try and figure out what's happening around us and what it means. Absolutely, but but. but- Here's here's the thing, and, and before we do this, we'll, we'll get into the list right after the break. But I wanna I wanna say this: that prophecy is not something to fear. It's also not supposed to be fulfilled. We don't want to fulfill it. Okay, just because it's foretold doesn't mean that you have to fulfill it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you're a parent, you're a prophet. If you've been through it before, you know what's coming. You try to tell your kids, "Hey, look." <laughs> I see you going down this road, you know, especially the teenagers. If you do this, then this will happen. Now, does that, what is that? Does that make you a prophet? Eh, no, but it's kind of prophecy. You're telling them, hey, look it. If you go and act this way, there is this result. Now, most kids, myself included, when I was a teenager, didn't really listen. And the prophecy was fulfilled. Okay? But it doesn't have to be that way. You can listen to the parent. You can listen to the creator that said, hey, look, if you do this, this is going to happen. It's no different, no different at all. And that's the way that you should view prophecy. It doesn't need to be fulfilled. We just got to listen. And if we listen, we can make the right decisions and humanity can go on and we can all sing Kumbaya. I like like that idea. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get my cardigan sweater and canvas shoes. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you you have that? <laughs> oh, 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 this is where I have to run because when he gets the canvas shoes out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm not talking oh, about I mean, Chuck Taylor. I was Taylor's. done with car- cardigan, cardigan sweater, actually. Because <laughs> is, is that a Cosby sweater? Because we're going to have other issues. I was thinking Mr. Rogers. Really <laughs> wasn't thinking Cosby. 
I'm thinking go Joe Cosby. Joe Cosby. You're going to sing a song while you put your shoes on? I'm going to go get some pudding and I'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't go away. The list when the Freedom Link returns. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Joe Joseph here. You're listening to the Freedom Link on Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com, along with Johnny King and... Aaron and Melissa Dykes, and the one and only, The Accent. And he's not even paying attention. Oh, I am. I just thought it could be more of a build-up than that. Is that all I get? The Accent? You're The Accent. That's your name. The Accent. The Accent. That's going to be like... Cool, cool. Can I have like a squiggle? I don't know. Like that's gonna name. be your. Maybe that'll be like your wrestling move or whatever when you hit like the square how Prin- circle. Like how Prince has a symbol. Oh, it could be a squiggly line. The That'd artist cool. formerly known as Kev Baker show. Quantum Kev is gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Uh, what? Uh, what do you call that? String theory. Um, I don't know, man. You'd be like a string. You'd be a quantum string. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Too much already. That's Freaky Friday oh, stuff, Oh, sorry. Man. But, well, yeah, we can't do that right now. we got to get into – it's Freaky Monday, right? I mean – Don't start me quantum after that magazine today, Joe. Just you wait until no, no, the no. next Freaky Friday. No, wait, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for that. By the way, it's Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. So – It's Freaky Monday. Yeah. Is that what you said? I don't know. <laughs> I don't exactly give the day's titles unless it's Freaky Friday. So uh, the list – the list. Shall we uh, start All right. venturing? Well, I'm down? just going to go down the list and we'll stop when we get to one you want to discuss further and we'll, we'll just expand sure. on it. Sure. And, this, and, yes. Anybody? Uh, anybody? We're not going to get far, are we? No. No, no probably not, actually. But, well, it, it's just kind of mind blowing because everyone was saying, do do a video on set on September. Talk about this. Talk about this. And I sat down and I went, there cannot be that many things that are actually going on this month that would make a really long list. It's got to just be a few things and people are overreacting. And then I sat down to try and make the list and it took me a really long time. And there's actually a, a lot of weird stuff that's going on all at one time this month. So we just ended Burning Man. So that's just that. I guess what consecrated the first part of the month with a very ginormous ritual involving tens of thousands of people. Then you also have just, I guess the irony of the fact that this month is national preparedness month. So FEMA dedicates September as that, which I always wondered if that's because of nine 11, I don't know, but, and we should probably just really quickly recap a few of the things that have already happened this month that have been very strange. Sure. Because right now, I mean, well, first we saw that really bizarre situation with the Chinese warships off of Alaska. Yep. They came within 12 nautical miles of off of the coast of Alaska. At the same time that there were reports that a Russian, what, submarine or something was off of the East Coast. So we had China on one side, Russia on the other side. And on that same day, we had that video that Dutch Sense covered it, BP Earthwatch covered it on YouTube, of that huge pulse of energy that went across the whole planet. I mean, you could see it most prominently off of, it looked like the coast of Africa coming across the entire Atlantic Ocean to North America. But that was, people that have been doing this for a very long time, as we, we discussed this last week, they... They said they didn't know what that was, and you could only see it on the um, the microwave readout for the precipitation. So it just it's was almost, a sudden... it's almost as if it swallowed or dissipated the energy of a couple of storms that were off the coast of New Zealand at the time. Mel, now yeah. Nano Girl was on with us earlier, and she was updating us about the fact that Dutch said watch out for earthquakes. And then bang, we've had two over six point zero today in that region. Now, Alaska that you were talking about as well, I've seen a video by Christopher Green who was kind of speculating maybe with everything that's going on in the world right now, could Obama have been having a not-so-secret meeting with the Chinese up there? And there was also an earthquake swarm at the Ascension Islands, very close to where the Chinese Navy were. I mean, and and people could say, well, that's just, I mean, that's the ring of fire, you're going to have things in there, but 
to have them be so close to these events all happening. And then at the exact, at the exact same time that that is going on, what a lot of people don't know, because it, again, it really wasn't publicized very much at all, is we have the announcement by the FAA in aviation circles quietly. And I think I finally did see an article in the Tampa Bay Times. But there was a last-minute drill announced, a Navy drill, for the entire month of September that's going to make the anti-collision systems for aircraft potentially unreliable. And so, and that comes out at the same time. So at the same time that we see this huge pulse happen, earlier that day, we have this warning that these systems are going to be made unreliable. Would a huge pulse like that make our systems unreliable? Well, yes. Th yeah, okay, so here's how, here's how an anti-collision system works, just, just so you know. It, it utilizes radar, simple radar, which is radio frequency. Now, if they're doing some sort of, exercise that's utilizing, say, <clears throat> scalar or something like that in order to uh, make, say, the atmosphere a more plasma environment, some place with something where you might have more ducting that's taking place, uh, then absolutely, you know, let's just say you put a heavy aerosol, um, like a heavy aerosol content in the atmosphere Automatically, you have ducting and you have a lot of reflective uh, properties going on. And as a result, guess what? You know, you're going to have degraded performance on your radars and, and that system. Yeah. It's so on one hand, you have the TCAS, which is the Traffic Collision Avoidance System, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. And they're saying that's going to be unreliable. And then uh -huh. you have the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast which I have the definition of it says it's a cooperative surveillance technology in which aircraft determine its position via satellite navigation, periodically broadcasts, broadcasts it, enabling the plane to be tracked. And I thought it was real smart ass. The guy in the Tampa Bay Times, he's like, well, this will give the pilots the chance to use their own fail safe tool oh. for their aircraft, their eyeballs. And I thought, OK, but <laughs> we're talking about. The potential for foreign aircraft. We're talking about if what if it's really cloudy or stormy or it's really dark at night. I mean, there's a lot of planes that are in the sky these days. It's not exactly like back in the olden times, you know. We've, and it's here's not like when thing. you're in a biplane and you can look I, all around and see all around you. I think a 757 has a hell of a blind spot. I don't know. I just, this just is saying. what I'm saying. I mean, you don't drive on what the right side of an 18 wheeler because they can't see you. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. But and so we've already seen just in the last couple of days, there's been a small those they're all been small aircraft, but there have been three crashes, one in New Jersey, one in New Hampshire and one in North Carolina just in the last couple of days since they announced this. And here's this dude in, in the Tampa Bay Times talking about, well, these pilots should just start using their own failsafe, their eyeballs. Okay, what, it's, <laughs> this isn't like the Wright brothers back in the day of the biplane. Like, he's just, ah, that guy, I was, I was thinking, yeah, you're going to feel real good, buddy, next time you have to report on a plane crash because... <laughs> yeah, for real. What a jerk. Ugh. But. They go on to say that, I mean, it, they make it sound like it was just going to be, uh, what was it, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, just down in the southeastern part. That's still, a, that's a but deep big area. It is, but then when you look at the actual NOTAM numbers that were put out, they go all the way up to New York and Washington. They go pretty much up the entire almost up the entire East Coast. And they specifically mentioned Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. And they're saying that these systems could suddenly become unreliable at any time throughout the entire month of September. Right. And it does not end until midnight, October 1st. And it's like we were talking about with Jade Helm. Everyone got really concerned about Jade Helm and what's going on with Jade Helm. But Jade Helm, we at least, we were given a heads up on that. I mean, the people... Uh, at these aviation outlets in the F Bay, they're saying that they're really frustrated about the fact that the DOD told them this very last minute and did not give anyone a chance to prepare or know that this was coming at all. This was last minute announced on September 2nd. And so, I mean, 
we can't just obviously nothing could happen, but the fact that that is happening at all, and we're coming up on what the anniversary of nine eleven, we're coming oh. up on all this other stuff that's going on in September. They're just adding it to the mix. I, it's we have to talk about it. Absolutely, it's it's, it's very play. disconcerting. Yeah, it, it's certainly something to pay attention to. I mean, willful ignorance is not going to make the problem go away. You know, sticking your head in the sand. Uh-uh. That doesn't that doesn't make things go away. Now, does that necessarily mean anything's going to happen? Of course not. Uh, no, we're not, you know, we don't we don't we're not swamis. I don't have a crystal ball, but it's certainly something to consider. You know, that's all. It's just getting as much input as you can. Well, and it also coincides with the fact that um, IntelliHub was putting out a link to the fact that they've called now for crisis actors on Craigslist for Boston for various dates all throughout the month. So it's a guy who used to work for Navy Special Warfare Systems, and he's now a veteran, and he works for a company called Lynx Global Solutions. But they've put out an ad on Craigslist for potential role players from the 10th through the 23rd to work various days throughout the month. And so he said, false flag heads up. Well, I mean, not necessarily false flag, but let's think about the fact that we have all this other stuff going on in September. We now have this surprise Navy drill that's going on off the coast that's going to make anti-collision you know, anti-collision aircraft warning detection systems, potentially unreliable. And then on top of all that, now we have throughout this entire month, the first session is going to be September 10th through the 12th. So covering your 9-11 there, then the 14th through the 16th, then the 16th through the 18th, and then the 21st through the 23rd. And they're straight up saying that Role players are going to be put through scenario enhancements that include things like civilians on the battlefield, opposing forces, specialized linguists, weapons, wardrobes, special and static effects, and intelligence and evidence. Yeah, I just got uh, word that they're planning on doing terrorist and chemical warfare attacks on the MBTA system in Boston. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, goody. That's what they're going to be drilling on. Yeah. I always love when they do that because we all know that none of those kind of drills have ever gone live. And they've definitely not sprayed various chemicals nah. and bacteria into mass transit. No, there's no, there's no. Just to see yeah. what would happen to the people. Ah. Like, that's never happened, right? Uh-uh. No, you know, <laughs> like even like in the uh, the city that seems to always be at the center of all the testing, St. Louis. For some reason, St. Louis is like the Petri dish of the United States. Yeah, they do like to do a lot of social experiments there, too, on people. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, so that just brings us up to the 10th. So that begins on the 10th. So ah. that's something to, that we should keep our eyes on. I'm I'm concerned about the, the sudden drill and then the huge pulse wave yes. again that I, yes. still no one has been able to explain what that is. They've said the Navy drill is going on. It's going to be up to 200 uh, nautical miles off the East Coast, but they, no one's given any specifics as to what is actually going on. Right. I put that video up on Facebook and I said, what do you think this pulse is? And pretty much everyone in there said they thought it was some kind of version of harp or something to that effect. And that would only go with what Kev said about how we, we now have storms that are suddenly dissipating or disappearing or whatever, but it was a huge wave. It covered the entire planet. Yeah. So. Interesting. So that's going on. So so that brings us to. The 11th. Oh, the 11th, which just so happens to be, folks, the last trading day, the last business day before Elul 29 on the Hebrew calendar. Now, Elul 29 is a very special day because that's the Day of Atonement. Uh, and there was, let's see, what, seven years ago? Seven years ago to the day on Elul 29, seven years prior, that was a day the market fell 777 points, the largest one-day crash in the history of the stock market. And then before that, uh, Elul 29, seven years before that, fell 684 points. At that time, the largest drop in the history of the stock market. So could we see a, a, a grand convergence of events on this day? I think 
It's a very good chance we might see something. It's a very good chance we might not see anything. You know, but I can tell you this, the powers that shouldn't be love their numbers. They love numerology and they love bang for their buck. And if you ask me, you can't get a better bang for your buck than you can coming out of September 11th this year. Just saying. I mean, damn. Well, of course, and it's also the 14th anniversary of the September 11 attacks. Oh. And so they love to always revisit that day. I mean, Benghazi happened on that day. They, they love to do stuff on that yes. day. They just love it. So, and I have to tell you, I mean, we recently went and visited Ground Zero. I had never actually been there. That was the first time for me to ever see it now that it's already been built up with these very creepy footprint monuments where it's almost like uh i don't like the soles of the buildings are being sucked into the ground i guess is the way and when i turn my camera on to film gaping it wound. yeah like a gaping wound i turn my camera on to film it and it appeared as if the sun's ray the ray of the sun and i could only see this on my camera i couldn't see it with my naked eye but was being sucked into the hole in the middle of where the building, because there's a big, it's like a fountain that drains all the water down into the middle, almost like a giant toilet. But it was as if the sun, the ray of the sun was being sucked into this dark pit. It was the, really, the really creepy. Maker? Is that right? That's what it sounds like they're describing there, doesn't it? And yeah. When you look at the images of that, it really is something very, very creepy about it. It's almost like the inversion of a black cube. Yeah, well, and I have a video. We, we have two videos coming out because we actually interviewed one of the architects and engineers for 9-11 guys who was there um, protesting, which they make you do way up the street. They have really locked that place down. There are signs everywhere that if you do anything to cause a scene, and it literally says something, I mean, I'm paraphrasing actually, but it says something like, if you cause a scene here, you'll be removed. So in effect, they've shut down First Amendment rights on Ground Zero. And they've also put up signs that say uh, that you could be searched at any time. There are guards everywhere. I mean, it feels... I mean, New York to me already felt very police state because there are just police everywhere. I mean, everywhere all the time, police presence in your face everywhere you go, every possible moment. But there specifically. And but at the same time, they have kiosks, uh, 9-11 information kiosks, almost like it's a fun <laughs> Disneyland kind of place. And, Yay. and for just twenty six dollars, you can go to the propaganda museum. Oh, he's got the thing drawn, brought up. Do you want to read them some of the stuff that it says? Yeah, the new Ground Zero. I've been there before, and demonstrations happened everywhere by all different kinds of groups. For, against, and between, spiritual groups, non-spiritual groups, whatever. The new visitor rules and regulations at Ground Zero next to these weird dark energy sinkholes would be how I would describe them. They read, prohibited behavior includes, but is not limited to, expressive activity that has the effect, intent, or propensity to draw a crowd, except by permission. Demonstrations, rallies, soliciting, leafletting, promotion, and any third-party vending. Sporting activities, cycling, skateboarding, rollerblading, roller skating, loitering, littering, smoking, throwing or placing anything in the memorial pools, Use of loud amplified devices, commercial filming, photography, or audio recording, except by permission, and on and on with a couple other things about alcohol and glass bottles. But pretty much the rules set up to restrict free speech altogether because I guess and if they pictures. let you do it or if you do it by permission, I guess, then that really isn't free speech actually. That's permanent speech, totally different ballgame. So. Which we totally did. <laughs> take pictures i mean it is pretty obvious why because everybody has been down there over the years to say their point of view uh including 9-11 truthers but many other groups as well and they knew exactly what they were doing by trying to do away with any demonstrations rally soliciting leafletting promotion expressive activity especially if it has the propensity to draw a crowd i mean come on <laughs> so so if i just broke out in cheesy broadway show tunes right and I drew a crowd, I would be arrested, even though it was be you a would like, be searched of merriment. You would be searched first and then arrested. Oh, I gotcha. 
and then ejected. Because they died for our freedoms, because the terrorists hated our freedoms, you get, you get no, no freedom. Yeah, well, that's kind of how it works. Freedom, the propensity to draw a crowd. And so at one moment I'm standing because all these people were lined up around these, you know, sinkholes where the fountains are. And it was almost like all of their energy was being sucked down into this. It was very it was hard to be there. My stomach hurt the whole time. It felt horrible. And what's really also equally creepy is next to it, they've built, I guess, where the new transit center is going to be for that area. They've built this thing, which looks like a giant dinosaur bones out in the desert that you would see it's a big white structure um and it's i i didn't know what it was i just it creeped me it creeped me out beyond i, I couldn't even explain it and i walked up to one of the security guards and i said sir what is that supposed to be and he said that's supposed to be a dove of peace oh no and i oh. said no really because it doesn't look anything like a dove of peace it looks like the bones from the inside of a dead carcass mm. that are right down underneath um the freedom tower i guess is what it's called now and then build it, the new shiny building seven right there triangulated with those is this carcass it looks like a, it looks like skeleton bone. It looks like a giant animal carcass. And I went and found a map. And you know what they call it on the map? What's it's that? Called, it's called the Oculus. That even sounds. It even. looks like a giant. It looks like a giant eyeball. From Oculus. The top. From the top, it looks like an eyeball. And if it looks like an eyeball, it looks like a closed eyeball, at least to me. Yeah. Sauron. And then you go down under the ground because you go under it because that's where you would catch the train and stuff. And you go yeah. down under there and it looks like a spine in the roof, like the bone structure thing. The, the pattern of that has continued. The design of that has continued underground and it looks like a spine. It's the, it is really the creepiest thing I've seen. <laughs> really, nothing about that whole area made me want to be there at all. And you have all these people happily joyously lining up to pay $26 to go into the propaganda museum to be lied to about the official government story. And there's all these places where you can put money into little boxes to donate more money to this complete freak show. And it's kind of like the Disneyland of suffering. It's the most horrible travesty. Did you just say the time. Disneyland of suffering? Yes. That was the best description I think I have ever heard ever. Awesome. It's, it is. They have key. They have kiosks where you can go and <laughs> and you can get information about the government books that you can buy that tell the government story. And they'll take your money and put it in a little donation so box. So it's like the and, Holocaust Museum, only in New York. It's like their version of it's, basically. Yeah, it's a lot like that. It's yeah. propaganda. They have a special line for families of survi You know, um, surviving family members that you can go in and get a little bit of a disc. I think you get nine dollars off. If you're if someone you loved was killed in 9-11, you get a whole nine dollars off <laughs> to go to go on the ride. That is the you might be able music. to buy a hot dog there. Yeah, <laughs> But I have it. I have it on my camera that it looks like the sun is being sucked down into a pit. It is. It, and then all these people are standing around watching it. I'm surprised they don't have a simulator there. Uh, experience 9-11 in first person. Yeah. Could, yeah. It's it's probably don't encourage coming. them. No, yeah, they will do it, and they'll charge a lot for it too. So that's going on, yep. and we, I'm going to get into some of the other stuff and then come back because I want to talk about Madonna, but I want to come back to her because she's yeah. not like central. But I don't. So chronological order would be good on this, but we got to come back to her. But okay, so on the 13th, there's a partial solar eclipse. Yes, which won't be viewable in North America. It's going to actually be viewable like in the southern hemisphere, Africa, the Say southern Atlantic, not Scott, Indian Ocean. They're not with their weather. <laughs> Antarctica. Oh, I don't know, man. We actually had sunshine today, dude. Get out. In September. How did you guys fare there, man? Is there like a breakout of skin cancer and everything? I mean. Oh, the hospitals are overflowing. I can only imagine. You guys got probably got baked. I will look like tomatoes, man. It's great. <laughs> Sorry, I always yeah. find it strange that Al Qaeda tried to attack Glasgow Airport, attack a bunch of Scotsmen who had paid money to go and get burnt in a foreign country. Anyway, what was the point? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Mel, I didn't mean to. Uh, so you wouldn't feel left out. That's it. That's what it is. Nothing to do with the nice 
city is really firm that run my smart city. Nothing to do with that. No, nothing. Yeah, pay yes. no attention to that. No, not at all. Actually, I'm going to wait to get to the rec because I see we're coming up on break. Yes. And plus, I think I just need a minute because I don't know. I, having never been to the 9-11 spot myself, I mean, I knew it was going to be emotional anyway, but then seeing what they had done to it. It was about as different as they could have possibly made it. And yeah, I feel like they went out of their way to restrict as much speech there as possible because they're tired of hearing about you know what. Well, and they're hurting everyone. They have all these guards everywhere and they're hurting everyone around like cattle. Like come this way. They've marked everything off in a certain way. So because they're still uh, building things. So you have to go through certain areas that I mean, it almost looks like I don't know. I can't even think recently. I guess that movie Divergent. The next movie that came out after that where they show how they're rebuilding the city and they're hurting people around in the different areas. That's kind of what it was like. Yeah. People being herded around. And then after a certain time, they shut it down. So you can't go see it at night, I guess, for very long because they kick everyone out. It's just very come here to worship and then leave. There's something very spiritual about it anti-spiritual about it. Very much so. And hour number one's done. Hour two's on the way. Johnny King cooking with the king. When we come back, it's very interesting. You know, you guys talk about, like, totally altering the landscape. That's what Titus did when the second temple was destroyed. Totally changed the landscape of Jerusalem. Very interesting. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Hour number two with Freedom Link right here on Truth Frequency Radio. TruthFrequencyRadio.com. And, uh, wow, our number one was just absolutely incredible. And we're, uh, we're up to, like, September 11th. And just wait. It gets so kooky from here. It's not even funny. But before we get to that, Johnny King, it's time for the Cooking with the King. What do you say? What, what's on the menu for this evening? Well, thank you, Joe. Being that September is such a doom and gloom month and all hell is supposed to break loose, I thought I would uh... – throw this recipe out for you and I'm going to read it word for word as the author uh, wrote it out. This is a treat your whole family can enjoy from cook your pet flat iron puppy steak with three pepper rub. Puppy meat is one of the tenderest meats there is. My personal favorite is Labrador puppies, though any breed will do. Use more puppies for smaller breeds. One medium-sized puppy will serve two adults or four children. It is preferable to slaughter the puppies while they are still weaning. Two pounds of flat iron puppy steaks, no older than six weeks. One tablespoon of smoked paprika. Two teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon ground sugar. Two teaspoons chili powder. One teaspoon dried chipotle powder. Half teaspoon ground black pepper. Half teaspoon garlic powder. Half teaspoon onion powder half teaspoon of ground cumin. John, uh, this yeah. is... Th- puppy is this like st- a Planned Parenthood shelter recipe or something? <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I haven't looked that up. <laughs> oh, God. It's like when they have a, a A&W and a... What's that fish Long place? Long John Silvers. Same, you know, occupying the same building. It's not good. That's all I can. <laughs> Is it like the SPCA and Planned Parenthood under one roof? Oh my God, that, John! Really? Yes. Yeah, stir together the paprika, salt, sugar, chili powder, <laughs> powder, black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and cumin in a small bowl until blended. Rub the seasoning mix over the flat iron puppy steaks, then wrap them tightly with plastic wrap. Marinate them in the refrigerator for two well, to eight I'll hours. Just give you a BPA. Well, well, wait a minute though. <laughs> if if you're down to eating puppy meat, where where do you get saran wrap, man? I'm just saying it's not like that's not normally on the list of things that you're going to store it or prep. Tell you to marinate it. It didn't tell you to marinate it with saran wrap. When I marinate salmon cubes in a um, smoke sauce before I grill them, I just throw them in a bowl. I don't wrap them at all. Preheat an iron. Preheat an outdoor grill for medium heat and lightly oil the grate. Cook the steaks on the preheated grill until cooked to your desired degree of doneness. About four minutes per side for medium. Allow the steaks to rest five minutes in a warm location before slicing. 
the serving suggestion suggests using the puppy's heads to top off the display. Make a small cutout portion of the puppy's fur adhered to toothpicks to garnish each serving. Oh, wow. Mm. Not, not to be outdone. We have one. Over, over to dinner there? <laughs> That's not going to be on my menu. Well, this one just made you. Oh, geez. What, what, what would that be? Brown rice kitten casserole. <laughs> what the you have all the you have all those cats down there, Joe. What are you doing? Saving up for a hit the fan situation? You have. Ange your own? is about to get on here and hurt you. Oh yes, yeah, you're about to get the, the can of whoop ass is about to be opened up. I didn't write this recipe. I'm only well. Exposing. Whoop ass goes nicely with a sautéed marinade of plums and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it does. Johnny King, what? what what's, okay, so go ahead. The author writes, There is nothing tastier than kitten meat. Properly cooked, it tastes like a cross between chicken and Cornish game hen. For the true kitten meat connoisseurs, there is nothing better than kitten meat from kittens that were skinned alive. My six- and eight-year-olds just love to do it. And not only that, but I give them help by holding the kittens as I remove their fur just prior to slitting their little throats. The kittens, not my kids. What? We can hardly wait as each lure is born to each litter is born and able to make this tasty meal. What are you? Wait a minute. So hold on. No, we can't. We can't have that, Johnny. No, you're killing me. You're killing me. Not good. Did. Uh, yeah, did, we're gonna. Uh, yeah, and it. I hit a sore spot with the cat, Joe. Oh man, leave the dog too, man. No way. They're they're my buds. So there you go. They're okay. protein in an emergency situation. Okay, well that's good. Well we'll we'll talk about that later when there's actually an emergency. <laughs> Until then, no. Oh, Mel, help. I. We got a lot of possums around here. I'm a lot less fond of. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, see, Johnny, see, we could we could do now, your, your fricasseed possum. But well, that... now, now, possums are something else. When I, I'll tell you a little true story. When I was a little boy, about 14 years old, we used to go out and trap these animals and turn their fur and get a little money. It was beer money for the weekend. Oh, see, so, yeah, see. So my brother and I checked our traps one morning and found a possum in it. Brought it. I knocked it over the head with the ball bat, threw it in the trunk, brought it home, hung it up in the basement, and started skinning it. Got the skin three-quarters of the way off as I was take, preparing to take off the front legs when the thing came alive. Oh. Well, while well, it's, well, it's hanging by its back I'll be leg. back after I throw up. <laughs> yeah. Bleh. Okay, so September 12th is the next stop on our list. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> It was then. It then became a possum pinata. No possum pinata. Get September twelfth, Mel. Uh, um. Yeah. Okay. Well. Can I have a moment, Eric? Do you have something you want to add? Uh, fun times. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um. As I was saying before the break. Yes. Now, um, well, there's supposed to be a partial solar eclipse on the 13th. 13th, 13th. Okay, so yeah. Now, I think that was, that, that's part of the, um, the, the blood moon tetrad because they had solar eclipses and the blood moons mixed in. Well, that's what I was going to ask you about. Cause okay. this, so, because we're having both a lunar, a full lunar eclipse this month and a partial solar eclipse this month. Okay. But the one on September 13th is not going to be viewable up here. It's only going to be viewable in the south, in Africa, the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, Antarctica, down there. So we're probably not going to see it, at least not here in North America. But it's also the last day of the Shemitah year. Right. Which, as you had mentioned, if they were going to do something with stock stock market crashes it could be that day as well right uh well let's see it's the 12th the 13th it'd be the 14th would be monday right and rosh hashanah starts at sundown that day oh great (laughs) so the 11th is the last wall street trading day yes and then you have 
this going on over the weekend. And Madonna is starting her tour here in Washington, D.C. Well, she starts actually in Canada, but her first day that she's going to be here in Washington, D.C. is on the 12th. And I'm going to come back to that, but I think it's relevant for what she's going to have in her in her concert. Yeah. So, cause we are talking a little bit about rituals here and these, some of these concerts, they've so they're, they're no longer just pop music anymore. The stuff that's going on on stage, that's, that's a ritual. And she's that's even totally, said that before. Yeah. I mean, she, she said that when she was performing at the Super Bowl. Aaron showed me that clip and she had said that it was a sermon that she was going to be delivering as if it was in church. And then, of course, she showed up in all this weird Egyptian gear and she was doing all kinds of weird stuff. So that obviously meant a lot more to her and meant a lot more things to people who know what they're looking at than it did to just some random people who thought they were going to the Super Bowl. And it's a huge amount of people there watching and it's a huge amount of energy. So Absolutely. That, they, that they get to have and harvest and have be part of whatever ritual it is they're doing. And these people, they have, they have no idea what they're part of when that stuff goes on. So you have that. Then you have September 14th. And is it Tishri? Tishri. Yes. Okay, I'm saying that right. One begins. And everyone has said that this is Anna, Anna Lucius or the year of Lucifer. Um, and we know that. CERN also has that big page up on their website about how this is the year of light. And that actually comes from the United Nations observance because they've declared that 2015 is the international year of light and light based technologies Ah. such as CERN. Oh, that's great. So officially it starts on the 14th and that is the day of the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. That's the day the shofar sounds. And it's also the first day that trading will resume on Wall Street after the Shemitah year has ended. So all of that's going on all on the 14th. Then the 15th comes and you have the 70th session of the UN General Assembly that begins on that day. And the first thing they've said that's going to be on the calendar is that France is going to introduce a resolution to formally recognize Palestine. And that's kind of heavy. Yeah, um, what's his name? It's big scary dude from Israel. Netanyahu. Netanyahu. Why do I always forget that guy's name? It's because his face is so scary to me. Like he, he makes does. these little he's facial like, expressions. He's got like just, a Pope Benedict face. Only it, it's it, chilling. Just nasty evil. Such just, a horrible evil guy. Yeah. And he's he's going to be there. And I guess he's already made a video speech to our Congress about all of these things, and he's made. Several video speeches about how these, you know, so there's there's going to be a whole, you know, gang fight, I guess, that's going to go down at the United Nations. I heard I heard they're going to redo Thunderdome and it's just it going to be sounds possible. Yeah, all it? out like chainsaws and a no holds barred. Well, and that's also the day that Jade Helm ends, too, which, you know, that's been the. The largest military exercise that we've ever had that we know about, it was based on artificial intelligence. So it was also the first of its kind. And it involved all of our special forces from our various military operations. And it, interestingly, we came across this story. It was up on TrueStream a couple days back. But a reporter out in Barstow was actually invited to come see some of the stuff they were doing for this Jade Helm drill. And, you know, at first they didn't let any media into this at all right but they did finally start letting some in here and there and there's a report out of of barstow the desert something i can't remember what it's called whatever their newspaper is called there but the guy was allowed to go and they showed him a rider truck and a hay and a hay truck and they said no he said what's why a rider truck you know it was filled with furniture there was a dryer in the back they said, no, come here and look closer. They opened the door to the dryer, and inside was a whole secret operations room inside yeah. the rider truck. That they were, And they said that their operations were successful. They were able to do everything they wanted to do. That's a quote. We were able to do everything we wanted to do, whatever that was. Because obviously – do, oh, do, do you remember in New York City um, – I can't remember. It was a couple of years back at least, but the X-ray truck – when that hit the street and they could see into buildings with this truck. Yeah. Yeah. 
very much like that. That's that's kind of how I envision it. Plus, like maybe a quasi uh, surveillance slant command center. But I mean, and they said they had all these hay trucks driving up and down the streets of Barstow and nobody knew any better. But it's they keep saying, you know, this was this is for foreign. We're infiltrating the streets and blending in with the popul with the civilian population for foreign for foreign lands. How many rider trucks have you ever seen in Iraq, Joe? Not a one. <laughs> Just saying, not a one. Maybe I, have, I maybe I missed something. I have family members who used to move people professionally in 18-wheelers for a living and um they weren't even allowed to drive some of those trucks into Mexico. So we can't just be having there's obviously if they're if they're outfitting rider trucks with all these special secret rooms and capabilities, that's not for foreign lands. And it seems almost kind of redundant anyway, knowing what we know. I mean, they could just be driving around in a white rape van with no windows. How why would why do they need to have a special outfitted rider truck? Exactly. And and here's the thing. It's a little overkill. Special forces have technology. Let me you know. That, for example, they have a handheld device that can actually see the heat signature of bodies that were there at one point in time. So they can tell, like, based on a heat signature that somebody was there and how long ago it was that they left. Just using this handheld scanner. What's that? Up to how long is that? I, I, I can't remember. But, I mean, it's it's a it was something that Breitbart had exposed a while back. And it was... I mean, I, this is what I'm saying. I mean, we have to be honest about the fact that we know that our, our military industrial complex and their black ops have things that we have no idea what that is. Totally. I mean, that, that most people couldn't even probably comprehend. And because we've been taught wrong <laughs> about things like the way our universe works as far as physics is concerned. I mean, I had somebody come into a video the other day and leave a comment about how they can't even imagine what's going on now because – None of us have been properly taught on how uh, electromagnetic frequency works, on how light works, on how our body cells talk to each other. I mean, all of these prevailing theories about how our brain works, I mean, just basic things like that. We haven't been taught a whole lot about how our our world actually works. We're all kind of floating around in the dark, and all of our ideas are based on an education that's led us into a, a – a different area because there's a basically there's a cryptocracy there's a breakaway civilization that's hoarded all of the science into one direction and they've kept us locked uh i guess what in the last hundred years in a, in a universe they just told it's kind of crumbs i mean they, they just throw crumbs at you basically yeah no i mean that's that's what it is Tech, technologically speaking i think they're uh, a, a lot way ahead yeah exactly you can't even probably imagine and and all of the cool little technological gadgets we have today i mean all of those things they're all crumbs that we were given by our military industrial complex after they weaponized them i mean our, our internet comes from darpa right actually cern made the first World Wide web page right isn't that what you were telling me that's right they actually created it that's they created it so there you go so that's good and I mean, even cell phones, the CIA had, they were texting each other back in the seventies to their agents. And now we have that today. And now we're all being spied on with it today. We're all carrying around our own spy device for the government to spy on us at any time. We're being tracked, traced, and all of our communications are being monitored. I mean, it's pretty amazing, really, if you think about it. So that's, that's going on on the 15th. And that's going to – Jade Helm will officially be over. But, of course, now we know there's a whole nother military drill going on on the East Coast that's going to be for the whole entire month. And nobody really knows what's going on with that. So then on the 16th, we have the Federal Reserve two-day policy committee meeting. Oh, boy. Begins. And this goes into what we were talking about earlier. But they're expected to possibly raise the interest rates for the first time in nearly a decade that have remained near zero since the crash of 2008. Right. And so people are speculating back and forth on whether or not they're going to raise rates, probably on the 17th, or possibly even announce QE4. Now, that's something that has also been put on the table as a possibility. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, here's what I think. I think that <clears throat> you, you can only do so much QE, and everybody's dumping the dollar. So what are they going to do? Are they are the Fed just going to keep monetizing, monetizing, monetizing? 
I don't think the world goes for that for that much longer. So I don't, and, and you can't exactly kick the can down the road per se so much. I know a lot of people are talking about bail-ins, uh, you know, uh, rating 401ks, that kind of stuff. And it, it could very well come to fruition. I don't know. I don't know how much good that would do. Uh, but I think the system is broken. And it's I think so broken. It's so it, but but the thing is, is to usher in that new age or that new whatever, you know, and well, what better way to do it than with the Pope? We'll get we'll get into that in a little bit. We're, we're going to get to the Pope. We're not but, to the Pope. But you see, what I'm I know. But but you see, we have all these events coming together. Right. That would dictate like a. And they don't want to let a good crisis go to no, waste. Oh, exactly. It's almost like that crescendo's building up again. It really is like that. And here's some interesting uh, trivia for you having to do with the Fed. They moved all their base of operations to Chicago back in April. That was reported in Reuters. It actually said, uh, the New York branch of the U.S. Federal Reserve, wary than a natural disaster or other eventuality, which basically means anything else, could shut down its market operations as it approaches an interest rate hike. And they've added staff and bolted up their satellite office in Chicago so that it could basically do all of the functions of the New York Fed. That was back in April. At the same time that that was going on, the Pentagon suddenly decided they were going to refurbish Cheyenne Mountain. Exactly. And move back into Cheyenne Mountain. And the Daily Mail reported on that day, they had an article and the title was, why is the U.S. military moving back into Stargate Base deep under the Rocky Mountains a decade after it was abandoned? Yeah, and 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 like you said, moreover, why is the Fed hightailing it to Chicago? To Chicago. I mean, Chicago, Chicago. That you know. we're moving everything inland. Everything is being moved inland. Right. The Plum Island is getting ready to open their doors in Manhattan, Kansas, right in the middle of Tornado Alley. I mean, they've moved a lot of major offices inland or they've bulked up uh, stuff in the middle of the country. A lot of stuff going on in the Colorado Springs area, things like that. So, yeah, I think it's very interesting that they said, oh, well, there might be a natural disaster or something or any other eventuality or something, which is pretty much what anything else that could possibly happen. I don't know. Let me get my science, uh, my science guy here. Johnny King. What what is that pretty much a catch all thing here? I mean, are we talking about natural disasters or what? I would say it's pretty much a catch all. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It, very convenient though that all of this is happening at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Well, so then on the 17th would be the second day of that Fed meeting where they're yes. saying that so they might that, announce something. If yeah, they I was going to say it an announcement. Be yeah. That day. Which is interesting because what else is happening on that day? Well, it's the voting deadline for the Iran nuclear deal, which we already <laughs> we know. Already our, he's got the votes. It's, he's got enough to pass it. So anything else they do talking about it for the rest of, the, of this time up until then is just going to be fluff right. or something to freak people out about the news or have a big thing over. But so we already know that's going on. And it's really weird because the government has set up their own Twitter account at the, the Iran deal. I think it's at the Iran deal. And they tweet things all the time about how there's no secret extra benefits for them and stuff like that. I mean, because if it goes out on Twitter, it must be true. It must be true. Well, that's how they're, that's how our government is choosing to talk to the American people about something like the Iran nuke deal through Twitter. Like we're all a bunch of children. So it's also constitution day, but again, what is that? Yeah. Who uh, really knows what that means? Who knows what that means? So, then you've got uh, September 21 is UN's International Day of Peace. Whew. And we all know what UN peacekeepers do. They're very peaceful people. Very peaceful. That's why they don't go around raping and, you know, killing people in other countries because they're very peaceful. Then on the 22nd, we have the Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca. Starts on the 22nd, goes over to the 23rd. And the 22nd is when the Pope is going to land at Andrews Air Force Base for his first visit to the U.S. in seven, the first time a pope has visited here in seven years, but it's a very different visit than any pope has so, ever. So heard. what you're saying is, is that on the 22nd and 23rd is when the Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca occurs when they all do what? They all go around, they basically simulate Saturn. 
because oh, you, that's right. They go around that circle, don't they? Yes, yeah. they do. That's I mean, it's I a big that. ritual that's happening at the exact same time, twenty second, twenty third, that the Pope is where. I think he's out where in New York. Those uh, Andrews Andrews Air Force. He's coming into Andrews Air Force Base. He's going to go to DC. Go to DC. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's very symbolic. You know, that, I think I think so too. Well, and I think that whole thing where they walk around there. I mean, think about how much energy. That's what I'm saying. Is being spun, spun around that thing. It, it reminds me a little bit of CERN, actually. Very much so. So then you have September 23rd. Yep. And. This is the day that a lot of people have said has been forecast for all these things. Now, there are a lot of things that are happening on September 23rd. It is the fall equinox. It's also Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It's also the 70th Jubilee of Israel. And it's also the Muslim holiday that's known as the Feast of Sacrifice. And if I say the name of it, I'll probably butcher it. You also have the Pope meeting with Obama on that day in D.C., and my mom sent this to me. It's the 266th Pope meeting with Obama on the 266th day of the year. And she noted that the average human gestation is 266 days, which some have signified as something being birthed on that day that he's coming. They're, they're, so, And they're saying it's an untimely birth, which... The word Nephilim or fallen angels also translates to untimely birth. And she sent that to me. She's like, think, think about, put all that together and think about it for a while. And I said, you're hurting my brain. Uh, all I got to say is KBS, eat your heart out on that woo. Cause that is, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, if, I mean, again, I'm not saying I agree with all of the things on this list. Oh, I, I mean, think these, this is the way these people think though. These are the kinds of things that they think about. They're very into numerology and numbers and how everything adds up. So yeah. To me, that is that's very serious. interesting. Yeah, and if they take it seriously, Mel, I mean, we should definitely take it seriously and pay attention. You know, they, this is the things that they draw power from and, and that they yeah, take advantage of. So, you know, at, at, a, at a minimum, you have to pay attention. At a minimum. But, I mean, this is just crazy. When we come back, last segment, and then we hand it off to Mike and Chris Don, the Rundown Live, coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here on Truth Frequency Radio. TruthFrequencyRadio.com. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Howdy. Joe Joseph here. You're listening to the Freedom Link on Truth Frequency Radio. Truth Frequency Radio. Along with Johnny King and our, I mean, this is a, the September list. Aaron and Melissa Dykes of TrueStreamMedia.com here to go over that. And we're on September 23rd still. We're on September 23rd still because it's yeah. a really long day long <laughs> long day in the annals and i know history. i know a lot of people have mentioned september 23rd is the day for this or that i'm not really sure why they picked that specific day i feel like yeah. a lot of people are trying really hard i think the whole month comes together it definitely paints a picture of a crisis that these people would not let go to waste exactly i'm not saying i think anything specific is happening that day i'm just saying but- here's all the things that are and what i forgot to mention before break is that CERN is scheduled to hit full power between the 23rd and the 24th sometime during that time. They're going to yes. crank it up to the highest power they've ever cranked it. That's right. That's right. And to boot, isn't that Madonna's day? That is Madonna's day. Well, we got to get back to Madonna and the Pope. Because, see, the thing is, the Pope is coming, and for the first time ever, he's going to speak to Congress. Actually, that's the 24th. That's the next day, right. So, so, so Madonna the very next day, on the 23rd. Well, here's the thing, see – the Pope is coming here and he's going to he's going to talk to the president and then he's going to address Congress for the first time that a pope has ever addressed Congress. And then he's going to address the United Nations right when they announce their new Agenda 2030 plan, which is going to be like Agenda 21 on steroids. And we'll get right. to that in just a second. Okay. But what's interesting is that Madonna is having her tour for this album she came out with called rebel heart and if you look at that album and look at the lyrics on some of the songs on that album oh. she's ta- one of them i think is called devil pray and she yep. says lucifer is near there's another one i think it's called ghost city or ghost town or something and it has to do with people surviving after 
and an apocalypse happens. Yeah, and then she had an Illuminati song in there, too, if I remember there, right. Yeah, there was a song called Illuminati. I mean, it's just, it's not really, when you think of pop music and you think of a bunch of little teeny boppers getting together to hang out. Those boy and bands and stuff, you know? Yeah. You, really, you don't think about the Madonna with the creepy, you know, tied up with weird that chains on her face talking about how Lucifer is near. You just don't think about that, but she's going to come here and she's her first day that she's going to actually be here is the 12th of September. She's going to be in DC. And then after that, she has several tour dates just in New York city. And then after that, she's going to Philadelphia. And what's interesting about that is when the Pope comes here, First, he's going to go to D.C., then he's going to go to New York City, then he's going to Philadelphia. So it's almost like she's going to do her ritual at these places, cleansing them or whatever word she whatever would use. Whatever word you that, use, yeah. Whatever word that would be. I mean, I don't think cleansing is the word I would use. Definitely think not. Whatever, consecrating, whatever that's thing ooh, that, that's that a she's great doing. word. Yeah, so whatever she's going to be doing, it's it's almost as if the Pope is then coming and following her around from city to city as she lays out the path for him. And what's creepy about it is that back on September 23rd, 2012, you know, three years ago, back when she was doing her whole creepy um, Super Bowl thing where she said it's like a sermon, we're going to, I'm going to deliver a sermon, it's going to be like we're all in church. Yeah. And she did her whole ritual then. That year she was doing um, these concerts. And on September 23rd, 2012, in Washington, D.C., she had a performance, and you can find it on YouTube. Um, the one I'm looking at is Madonna September 23rd concert in Washington, D.C. reveals what is coming. I'm not saying I agree with everything that that person is saying because that person is the person who claims that she's going to be raptured away. And it's it's a big rapture puzzle. She's going to leave. We're all going to be here and all that. But the video that she has up is just the video of this. And there's three screens, three giant screens behind Madonna. And if you watch what's going on the screens because she slows it down to show you, it looks like heaven falls first. And then there's this glowing pyramid that comes down. And then it's like a blackness comes down. And all of this is while she's dan you know, doing all her crazy Madonna dancing, which is just so yeah. weird in contrast with that. Mm -hmm. Then fire falls down. So a whole bunch of fire looks like brimstone and hell just is falling from heaven. Then you have the cross falling, which is this cross that she put an M on instead of where Jesus would be. Then you have what she says is the tree of knowledge. I'm not sure if that's true, but you have this tree that falls down and the roots are all arms. Kabbalah. and It's very creepy. It's like yeah. arms and legs and stuff. It looks like a bunch of arms grabbing, but it's a tree that falls down. And then after the tree falls down, you have a giant, I guess it looks like a demon or a fallen angel, pitchfork, giant wings thing that falls out of the sky. All very black, all very dark. Nothing about that makes me think pop music. Yeah. <laughs> it's very symbolic. It's very occultic. And it's very laden with all kinds of hidden symbolism that obviously means a lot to her because she did that. And that was exactly three years ago, September 23rd, 2012. So, you know, I mean, we've seen some of the costumes for this thing where she's got these guys running around on stage by her wearing giant bull horns the horns of a bull on their That's heads right. yep. and they all look like demons. And so it's very interesting. I think given all of that symbology that you have her going DC, New York, Philadelphia, then you have the Pope DC, New York, Philadelphia. I think that's interesting. Yes. And then you have, so you have that going that. So that's just the 23rd now that we've got. Correct. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the 24th, you have the Pope speaking to Congress in the first ever, ever, papal congressional address so that's not happened before right cern is actually going to be doing a special event that night called made of shadow and light which has to do with this nobel laureate that's going to be there presenting an anthology of poems and drawing and art which has to do with the topic of darkness which i think is just very interesting very <laughs> interesting indeed. all of the all of the stuff that's going on with cern and the matter and the antimatter and just I don't know, we we we've talked, you you played that video back sure. when we were on a few weeks ago about CERN's effect on your soul and the effect yep. of antimatter and dark dark what is known as dark matter on the psyche of people. 
I know that I've seen lots of presentations on BP Earthwatch's YouTube channel. When they fire CERN up to these super high intensities, it actually messes with the magnetosphere of the planet. And consequently, the Schumann resonance, it has to. Which is something that affects every living thing on the planet. We're all tuned to that. Exactly. So if they're messing with that, it's going to be messing with you. I mean, I've, I've heard some activists talk about how September you already have a lot of violence and crazy things going on because of the way um, the magnetosphere and the sun and things like that mess with people during the equinox time period. It already causes people to get a little crazy. What the hell is going to happen when they fire this thing up? And then there's this theory that they're not just going to be firing up CERN, but they're going to fire up all of the large particle accelerators all across the country simultaneously together. I mean, I don't know that we've ever seen what that would do, but there's all kinds of weird pages on the CERN website about how they, they're opening the door. They have a picture where they're, they, they call the, they're saying the large Hadron Collider opening the door and they have a key that's being handed off. Yep. Some of the operators, it says LHC, Large Hadron Collider, on this giant brass key they had made for this. And we know they have that weird dance opera that they're filming in there called Symmetry. Oh, I mean, <laughs> now. The Dance of come, Destruction. Come on. I mean, it doesn't get any more of a matter of fact, it is so overt. I think that's <laughs> why people are like, nah. It's got it. Well, yeah, because it's just too much. It's too many things. Yeah. I mean, they've got they've got the Shiva statue outside, which can be taken multiple ways, but sure. you have to destroy before you can create. So are they destroying before they create? I know that recently, not that many weeks ago, they were projecting Kali on the Empire State Building. And they can say what they want to about the new age image of Kali, but that's not what Kali has always meant. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking back to my Indiana Jones days. Do you remember exactly. Kali? Yeah. In the Temple of Doom? Kali Ma. And they're ripping his heart out and shoving him Kali into a pit of fire. <laughs> I, sorry, I'm not thinking of peaceful things when I think about having my beating heart ripped out of my chest as I'm descended into a pit of fire. So, you know, tell me all the new age crap you want to about how they've changed Kali into this beautiful mother-like feminist whatever, but... Sorry, that's just nah. not what they've always projected here. Yeah, on the, the western thousands of side years of, of history is on the side of evil. Well, and what they've shown us here in the West, what, the, what, what Kali has always been shown to us here in the West. I mean, they didn't project Kali in India. They projected Kali on the Empire State Building in New York City. Yeah. So which we, have to, we have to take that as the meaning of Kali as we have known in this culture, not as you have known in your culture over there. That, and I've heard people say you're racist if you say that. I'm sorry, how is that racist? They projected it on the Empire State Building. They didn't right. project it in India. Okay? And from a, and, and They're from racist. A, and from a biblical standpoint, this is significant because in the last year especially, we've seen in the United States, you know, a falling away that has you have never seen before in the, in the history of the nation. So much so that, you know, the next thing you're looking for is Babylon the Great has fallen because that's the next thing in line. And, I mean... <laughs> If there ever was a convergence to, for Babylon the Great to fall, this could very well be that convergence. Not saying it is, just saying that, woo. The, the name of Kali means black one and force of time. Wow. The goddess of time, change, power, creation, preservation, and destruction. Destruction. And what's interesting is, you remember I Pet Goat 2? Yes. I pet go to, I, I watched, uh, the thing always obviously creeped me out, but you know what happens? They show, first they show this kid rising up out of this white mountain, and when they pan around, they show something on the ground that kind of looks like CERN, actually. And then right after that, you show Kali and Shiva, you show the Dance of Destruction, and then what happens right after that? The Antichrist comes. Yep Floating out of that thing, and he's got the pyramid with the all-seeing eye on his forehead. So, so I'm just so saying it's kind of all these saying, yeah mm -hmm. all of these symbols all at once. So then back to this list. So we have that. Then on September 25th, that is the day that the 500 days to climate chaos. Remember when? Oh French, God, the French guy. French. French oh, why did he have to say that? Come on. 
French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, he was at Brookings on May 13th, 2014, and he said, we're on the edge of a climactic abyss. In fact, we have 500 days to avoid climate chaos. And I actually made, I wrote an article that day and I said, really? What happens on the 501st day? Well, I guess How do you know it's exactly out. 500 days, right? Uh, we got almost, what, 14 days basically until that happens? Oh, uh, boy. What people don't realize is when he started that, and I didn't even, because I didn't read his whole speech. I yeah. just uh, wrote quickly about him saying that because I thought it was kind of really silly at the time. Right. But when he began that speech, the very first thing he says in that speech is, we live in dangerous times because the pillars of the international order are increasingly being questioned. So... That kind of changes the tone of the whole climate chaos thing. Almost it's, sounds like uh, Kev's Red Dragon is actually starting to pull some strings here. Well, it definitely sounds like a whole new world order. They're very yep. concerned because international order is being questioned. And any time international order or order gets questioned, what do they like to do? They like to bring chaos so they can make more order out of it. Right to have a reason to get the order that they're not obviously feeling as though they're getting. And he didn't just say it once at Brookings Institute. He then went with and appeared alongside John Kerry and said it again later that same afternoon to make sure that that statement would be all over the news. And it was 500 days of climate chaos. Well, the 500th day is September 25th, which just so happens to be the exact same day that the United Nations is launching their brand new universal agenda for humanity which is their Agenda 2030 plan that people have called Agenda 21 on steroids, which is going to be at the Sustainable Development, and the Pope is going to give an address at that assembly. And if you go through, and there's there's a whole page on this on the Sustainable Development United Nations website, but and they have all these goals, 169 targets and all these goals, but there's a list here, and I'm scrolling through because... If you just go to the sustainable goals and look at that, all of them have double meanings. So goal one is ending poverty in all its forms everywhere. When I see that, what do I think? I think of the IMF and I think of the World Bank and I think yeah. of how they like to take over countries and institute all kinds of clampdowns and rules in exchange for money to try and help them out of poverty. Then you have goal number two. We're going to end hunger and achieve food security. Well, what does that mean? We know that means that means GMO. In fact, it says achieve food security, improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. That's just a nice little word for Monsanto's Monsanto. products that they want to spread all over the place. Goal number three ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages well that's probably your vaccines and your birth control because that's how they think of that ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning well there's your propaganda achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls no there's your birth control sorry and ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation well, I guess they're going to dump fluoride in everything and probably take control of people's water. Ensure <laughs> access to affordable, reliable, this sounds great, and modern energy for all. There's your smart grid. Do you see what I'm saying? Like oh, you yeah, can totally. go through this whole list. It's like vaccines, GMO, smart grid. I mean, all of it. Free yeah, but, trade, but certainly free trade not zones. Not free energy. You know, not like no, 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 uh, no, no. It's control, control, jackboot under the do thumb. Ever, do you ever think about that? If they really wanted to. If they really cared so much about the environment, because that's how Agenda 21 talks, like it's about saving the earth. Why are they so hell bent on spreading genetically modified food everywhere, which requires way more pesticides and creates super bugs and super weeds and harms the entire planet? Population I mean, control it all in one. They're full of crap. They you can kill your entire. weeds and control the population all they with one chemical population. spray. Absolutely. It's just lovely. So that's going on. So that's wonderful. And let's see. Oh, the Tomorrowland Festival. We were talking about the Burning Man Festival. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Tomorrowland Festival. They're going to have a festival in Georgia, of all places, starting on the 25th, runs through the 27th. It's called the Tomorrowland Festival. It's very similar, except it's more of a electro. Except it has no cool. It's not. It's more about electro music, electronic music. and But it's going to be celebrated at a location that's on the 33rd degree parallel north. So, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And if you go and look at the festival, they always have this year-end um, 
video where they kind of sum up what happened. And it starts with this old guy doing a voiceover and they open something they call the book of knowledge. And they talk about how this year the book of knowledge was opened and blah, blah, blah. And one of them, and I can't, I can't remember, I, there's several of them and I watched one of them was talking about how the key was hidden a long time ago and now we found the key. And so we're going to be using the key. There's all this language that it's, definitely double-sided. Wow. So you have that randomly going on in Georgia. I'm sure it means nothing. And um, (laughs) on the 27th, when that ends, you have the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. And then that night will begin, going into the 28th, the total lunar eclipse of the final, the fourth blood moon. Best seen from Jerusalem. When the moon is at perigee. Yes. It will be seen... It will actually be visible from most of North America, South America, Europe, and West Asia. And it's going to be a three-hour and 20-minute long event from what I've seen. But so so here, I know they said the moon is going to be totally eclipsed for an hour and 12 minutes. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So it's the last of the four blood moons on the Feast of Tabernacles. And then on the same day, the 28th, you have the UN Peacekeeping Summit that begins and the Chinese president is going to be there giving a speech. And what's interesting is he's supposed to come sometime this month and talk to Obama, although no one. Oh, I think he's already people, been here. I think he's here. Was he here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is he here? Okay. I think so. Because I, so I, I remember right. Hang it was out just a, for a month? It was either that. No, no, I'm sorry. It was the king of Saudi Arabia was just here. Yes, That's who it was. was the king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. He, he rented out the entire Four Seasons. Yeah. I mean, they brought in, they moved in all this gold furniture. For well, him. you know, they're like used to doing that for Bilderberg and all that like, kind of stuff. So. Yeah, like they just have that gold furniture like in a shack. In a shack. <laughs> just get a shed. Just shit out back. Yeah, just just move just... it in. <laughs> but so he's supposed to be coming, but is he coming? Because they, they're not telling us what day he's supposed to be here. Like we obviously know what day the Pope is going to be here. Because you don't. Because we don't know if he's coming or not. He's a ninja. He's, he's a part ninja. of the dragon family. Well, I, <laughs> I guess like, like a poof of smoke and then he comes. That's what I'm saying well, because he has he's to. He's a ninja. He's got to be covert. No one can know. Well, he's supposed to come address the UN peacekeeping summit. So, so he'll probably just poof of smoke. Poof, there he is. Show up does for that. It, and then poof, he smokes. Is he going to talk to Obama? Because obviously something's going on between China and the U.S. right now. And we're Russia. Not being, and Russia. And we're not being told what that is. I mean, there's already been how many explode four explosions in China that they've not told us what actually caused it. There are people that right. are writing to people that I know who have family members in China and telling them that this is uh, obviously space based weapons being used by the Pentagon. Yeah. They're trying to censor people from talking about that. And then here we have all these nifty little hacks that are going on, but they're not called hacks. They're called um, cyber warfare. Yeah. No, no, they're being called technical glitches. I mean, technical glitches. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. I, I, didn't, I was trying to be politically correct, but apparently I didn't take it far enough. I'm sorry. Right after Tan Jin happened, we had a huge explosion here in Texas, and they didn't put it anywhere but on the local news. It, right. was, huge. it was a huge three-alarm fire that burned for a very long time. It was very big. But, I mean, there was no one there at the time that it happened, so maybe that's why, but... They never really talked about that, and I thought nope. that was really interesting timing because most people don't even know that that happened. It was a huge explosion. So that's going on. That brings us up to September 30th, which yes. is the cutoff day for the $1.1 trillion bill that was supposed to keep us solvent and keep us going. The last it expires on that day. Is the government going to then also shut down? Because we know that they haven't even begun to talk about that. I don't no. even think focusing on it no they just as a matter of fact uh i think they're coming to session here this week starting tomorrow and i would hope that that would be a somewhere on the agenda somewhere some sort of continuing resolution normally that's what they'll do it's always a last minute cra and after then, we have the fed and the un and the well, everything <laughs> everything else it's like it's nuts. So, Joe, these are all the things that I found that are going on. And there's actually more stuff. I just didn't put it on the list because I was trying to keep it to all of the very relevant things. But, my goodness, look at all the stuff that's getting ready to happen. And that's the problem. You know, you said at the beginning of the broadcast, and I think that it's so relevant, that you can look back at other months and you can look forward to future months 
And I don't think you're going to find a month like September 2015 with all of these converging events at the right times to boot. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there's a serious convergence, Aaron. And that's, I guess that's what we're down to is what do you think that this all means? Because in my estimation, I, again, I don't want to scare okay. people. And I'm not trying to fear monger, but you can't look at all the crazy people that are running things and the way they do things. I mean, they always like to have stuff happen in September anyway, but to pass up all of these events coming together in one place, especially all of the signs in the sky and all the religious stuff that's going on. So. The, the, let me tell you, because um, from a from a standpoint of where we are now, I always look back at prophecy again, because but to me, God's telling his children, hey, look, this is the way it is. If you don't, if you go down this road, this is what's going to happen. Well, we've seen it before, at least in biblical history, you did. And that was uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son. Nebuchadnezzar's son was, uh, what was it, Belshazzar, right? I think it was. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, they, he throws this party one night, and uh, they're drinking out of all the the Jewish uh, religious pieces and all their goblets and all the, all the gold stuff out of the temple. And uh, basically, it was, was kind of like the last straw for the kingdom of Babylon. And that night, a hand appeared out of nowhere, and it wrote on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson, which, if you interpret that, Mene means God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Um, Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And basically that night, the Medes and Persians conquered Babylon and slayed Belshazzar. Um, the, the kingdom was effectively judged at that point. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but with all these things converging, it could be that, you know, mene, mene, tekel, parson, that we have been, psh, you're finished. Babylon the Great has fallen. It could very well be that event. It could very well be nothing. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think right now the the thing that I'm most concerned with is <sighs> these people that run things are insane. If I know anything about it, anything, I know that much. They're crazy. They're evil. <laughs> they're evil in a way that most average people can't even comprehend, and I can't even half the time comprehend it. The stuff that they've already done, the things we've already seen, 9-11 – I know. My mom, my mother sent me a book on how 9-11 was a mass ritual. I mean, this is something that most yep. people have come to recognize and realize that that was a mass ritual that we all saw. And perhaps they're out of time. Like, we're out of time. Because <laughs> it's two hours already. I just don't think they're going to skip up this chance Your to do something. Yeah. No, I don't either. I don't, I don't either. So, like I said, prepare for the worst. Hope for the best, <clears throat> folks. That's all you can do. And get right spiritually. If you haven't yet, and that's it. Take one day at a time. That's all you can do. That's all you can do at the end of the day. Well, yeah, and there's no reason to freak out because nope. it's these people, it's not going to change anything. You should nope. love love, love the people you're with and try to be as happy as you possibly can. Put out that light energy because they can't Absolutely. feed on that. It's poison to them. Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys. And we'll uh, see you yeah. again Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, oh. We love everybody. Thanks and have a great evening. And remember, wherever you are, make it TFR. <laughs>